We're back. This is Dave Vellante with David Floyer, and we've been unpacking Flash and the relationship of Flash to Oracle and increasing performance, cutting costs, changing applications, changing the way in which customers are designing their applications. Ken Growey is here. We're going to talk more about that. Ken, welcome back to theCUBE. Thanks, David. The Cube's been good to us. Yeah, a lot last of news, time, lot last of news time we talked talks. to you, right, was at VMworld. Only a month ago, yeah. A month ago, and then you guys just you know, announced you were selling the company for like $680 million. Note to other vendors out there, go on the Cube, things Come happen. on the Cube, right? <laughs> Sell your company. <laughs> well, yeah. I said things happen. <laughs> good things happen. Good things happen. Good Nobody's things ever happen. been fired for coming on the Cube, that's No, no, we've but, enjoyed uh, it. Thank you for having well, us on yeah, here. Well, you're welcome, welcome back. So, uh, yeah, big news. That's. Uh, that's awesome, and uh, it, it kind of shocked everybody, you know, um, that that it occurred when it occurred and uh, to whom it occurred. So, uh, congratulations. Well, well, thanks. We're excited to be part of HCST. It's not official yet. We expect there are other governing bodies that have to be involved, but uh, we do expect around middle of October will be a big part of the family and uh, gives us more resources, gives us more feet in the street, gives us more engineering talent. It should uh, be a very good force in the flash space. Yeah, so in the last 12 months, you guys have kind of transformed the, uh, the operation and really got focused. Talk about that a little bit. Where have we come from in the last 12, 15 months? Well, it's what we've decided to move, and I recently read a book, Blue Oceans. What I mean by that is, it's everyone else is competing on the hardware space. Us moving to the software space, be able to share it. David, I met with you at our place a couple different times really go into the new ocean, do this kind of new space where you actually have new sharing software, new VHA hardware, uh, failover, and then actual caching. In fact, it's ironic, we're here at Oracle Open World, and some of our customers at the booth, I think it's about 10 feet away from us, are meeting with us because they're looking for an affordable solution for Oracle Rack. And what better than having vShare, the ability to use between the different different cards. So that's really where our investments through our boss, Mike Gustafson, and the board, have been in the software space. Because that's how we're really leading a flash platform transformation like I talked about last time. Because I, I think if you go hardware only, you're going down a trail that you're not going to like in five years. Well, you're going to compete against the, the, the big fabs, you're going to compete against SanDisk and guys that uh, you know, love that business. They love that low margin, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, software is where it's at. We write about software-led infrastructure. So what's different about your software uh, approach than say some others? Well, it, it's designed with the Flash, actually the Flash kernel and expertise. Our founders actually started seven years ago, I think David, you know this, actually with a NOR appliance. That's right. Two types of, two yeah. types of Flash. They chose NOR a little bit faster, get in the kernel and actually uh, put it in there. A very, very helpful uh, way to go through it. But they took that expertise learned through the scar tissue and took the scenic route, as one of our founders talks about <laughs> it, to get to the NAND. But for the last two years, we've really been dominating, first with hardware, now with software. I'm curious, David, your, your take on our software uh, strategy. Well, I, I was uh, privileged to, to hear two presentations from you guys. One was, I don't know, about an hour, about a year ago, mm -hmm. and, and uh, you were looking down some difficult paths or different alternatives. And then the second one, which was, uh, uh, about the software that you had put in place. And then the one thing, piece of that software, which really, really impressed me, was the, uh, the, the ability to back up databases, uh, the ability to, uh, to do that. And, Have availability, and sure. Absolutely, availability across the servers. And that's something, um, it, it's, it's okay for the people who are writing software where they're going to take care of that themselves, so those are the hyperscale people. But for the other 95% of the market, the enterprise space, they need the enterprise space. They need that uh, capability, and I think that uh, was a game changer. Uh, that was really a, a great piece of software. That's my my take on it. And how's it going? Uh, you've got customers that've got that installed yet? Where is it going? Uh, hundreds and that? hundreds of people using the product today. Uh, really excited about it. In fact, if it's okay with you, gentlemen. I'd like to make an announcement. Yeah, if absolutely. Okay, sure. love announcements now, like la last time I was here, you said I was the only one who brought a prop, <laughs> so I'll, I forget to keep it going. Uh, in my hand, and we'll be announcing it out to the public tomorrow, but for the people watching theCUBE today, I have in my hand a half height, half length, 4.8 terabyte. David, I said 4.8 terabytes. Amazing. 4.8 terabytes on a PCI Express card. Uh, we talked about having vShare and Oracle Rack in the past. You know, you actually have the two cards across the servers and actually share the information. 
that should look like a decade or so ago what you would do with the sand. So at the speed of microseconds, 50 microseconds or below, as far as having the number of hundreds of thousands of IOPS you can get out of a 4.8 terabyte card, this is the announcement from Veridin today. We think we bring it forward. We believe it's three times more dense at a half height, half uh, length format than our competitors. And we're seeing a lot of uptake for the uh, product as it is now. And we'll announce it to the world as far as a press release tomorrow. So this is always the big problem, right? These are essentially direct attached devices. Yes. They didn't talk to each other. You guys are essentially creating a, a SAN-like capability through software. Correct. That allows you to recover from failure, to move data, to share data, access data, all the things that you'd expect uh, from the SAN. All the things, Dave, you and I were both in the business when people were selling RAID storage, yeah. very application by application. I happen to be a member of the sales force that when SANs came out, it wasn't to improve the speed, it was to improve the access, the availability, the usability. That's what I think is going to make this flash more pervasive. We're leading a flash platform transformation, and by having that software, people in the enterprise space can feel as comfortable as the scaled customers that you and I deal with every day, David. So that's, that's a big move for us. I don't want to say it's just the hardware, but it's really good to have the world's best hardware when it comes to flash. It helps sell the software, and it, they pull each other. Why, David Floyer, why, what's, what was the technical challenge in achieving that? Why did, because the industry used to say, remember, we would give presentations back in 2009, say this is the future, and people say, oh, how are you going to solve this problem? What's the technical gate there? The, the, the technical gate within that was uh, A, focusing on it, but because the hyperscale people solved it <laughs> another way. The, because it would kill your <laughs> sand business, okay, yeah. right, right, okay. You said that. <laughs> but secondly, and more importantly, to do that, you actually need the two controllers to be talking to each other you have to have it right down at the kernel level within the controller, within each of those spaces. So it's a big investment. It's not a trivial investment. If you don't have that communication at that level, then you can't have the, uh, the uh, um, single point of control, if you like, shared across the two. That's the technical reason. Most of the other systems in this area the, uh, the, the point of control is in the, in the server itself. It's at the time of commitment. Here, they talk to each other, so there's dual commitment happening all at the same time. All right, Ken, now what do you got here? The, uh, the VIP impact program, what's that? Well, you're the biggest, best straight person uh -huh. of all time, David, I appreciate it. No, uh, a lot of people have come to us, especially in the channel, saying we, we get it now. We know Flash is the building block. So a quick prop for everybody, last Tuesday we announced the VIP, Veridian Impact Program, last Tuesday, and uh, what it's allowing people to do is not just have our own sales force, or our OEMs build and lead the Flash platform transformation, but instead having the channel, the people actually put the servers together, and that certainly helps. Um, in fact, announced today, big of announcements today, we're also announcing something called the VPAC, so small V, P-A-C-K, or V package. What we'll do is every new VIP partner between now and the end of the year, we will actually include a piece of our software for all the hardware they sell. So you find a new customer in Illinois or Iowa or in Milan, we'll include one of our pieces of software, your choice, VCash, VHA, or VShare, which is a demonstration in the booth just right next door to get rack affordable as part of the program. The other logo I wanted to show, and, and um, I, what I've become a fan of, this is Veridin validated, what I've become a fan of is building a huge certification program. So if we just keep it to the 200 or so people within, in, within Veridin and keep it within that ecosystem, that's great. But if we extend it to channel partners, that helps the system. But if we extend it to professionals, so think of the people you call in the end user community. If they build out their first flash network and then they move to a different company for whatever reason or decide to become a consultant, that logo stays with them. So they go through the due diligence of actually taking the test, become a certified professional like you'd have many other vendors take, but we want to be the leader and the thought leader and the flash experts, and that's what uh, Veridin Validate has become for a certification program for those inclined to build out a flash platform. So you guys um, have some pretty impressive performance stats that I've seen, independent, mm -hmm. uh, like, like sniffing around at different labs and you know, running, people running iometers, and the Veridin you know, product keeps mm -hmm. popping up as a, as a leading product. You know, why is that? What, what is it about your system, your architecture, that, that makes it go so fast? Well, I think David hit a home run before. It's not just the software. The hardware is designed from the flash transition layer right from the very beginning. So we designed it so you're sub 50 microseconds on reads, sub 50 microseconds, sub 25 microseconds on writes. And what I'm pleased to say is, because of doing it at the kernel level, at the flash transition level layer, you're able to put redundant ser uh, server actual software, VHA hardware between the two and the software, you can keep that same low latency. It's all about going after latency. You had said before how people went to the SAN type bases and they like the usability. If you change the building block to flash, 
and you keep the nice usability of sand, you get the best of both worlds. But that's what Veriton's best on. We came from the NOR appliance basis, moved it to NAND. Uh, once you've made an appliance based on flash, it's easy to make cards. So, I wonder if we could talk about sort of the industry trends and, and some of the transitions we're seeing. Um, for the last several years now, we have, we, have, we have seen some major storage exits. You saw the tier 1.5 guys you know, get absorbed. I felt like that wasn't as transformational as, as Flash is going to be. Now you're starting to see, you, you, know, you guys have announced an acquisition, you're seeing some companies go public, you're seeing some, some moves on the chessboard, you know, Cisco made a move. Mm -hmm. um, but we, Dave and I have talked about this a lot. We feel like it's different. It's not like a one-time dedupe hit, you know, deduplication you know, came and went, and it's there still, but it's sort of embedded in. And maybe Flash gets embedded in the same way, but we feel like it's all about the application. The applications are changing. I wonder if you could talk about what's changing in your customer base, or your customer's customer base from the standpoint of, of applications. Well, you can't fight physics. So if, it's, if people are moving the applications to the web, that's what really changed it all. These devices that we all run around with, we're trying to do everything. I noticed you being on the web right before. We're using this as your first or second device, and you're actually approving and actually making applications stand up very quickly. I saw through, I think it was Mark Hurd's presentation earlier today, he mentioned that the average application, legacy application, is 19 years old. Well, by the time my kids get in this workplace, that's going to just be unacceptable. 19 years ago, that's 1993. That was before Twitter was out. It was before most of internet was out. The web, you couldn't the find everything. web was kind of the conceived web was, back then. Was, it was, yeah. it, we were using Mosaic back then, yeah, right. or AOL, and using yeah. dial-up modems or whatever. Yeah. So my answer to my question, if you can design applications at microsecond speed with Flash inherently in there, um, I'm seeing Oracle embrace it. I'm seeing some of the other application partners embrace it. But you can't fight physics. So if you had to do it all again, which is why we're doing so well, we talked about this when we were at our location, why we're doing so well at China. China has to go right to mm. flash. They don't have to roll out a SAN and then undo the SAN a half a decade later. They can go right to flash and then bypass, go right to mass transit and forget the car, for example. Well, that brings up an interesting point because, because if, if you can compete with a clean sheet of paper, you mm -hmm. can get a much more competitive advantage. A lot of people will say, well, people aren't going to rewrite applications, you know, there's the inertia of the install base, and nobody knows that better than we do. But at the same time, you know, you mentioned China. If they're developing applications on a greenfield basis, doesn't that give organizations like that a huge competitive advantage and, and doesn't that entice others to really think about rewriting applications for a new medium? Absolutely, you can learn how to swim much better at five years old than you can at 50. And the point being is, when you're at, you don't have to learn how to do a bad application before you go from the very beginning. So clean shade of paper, you're able to design everything with the web in advance and with mobile as far as in advance. In fact, the last announcement I wanted to talk through is some of our customers, so I mentioned the partners are coming towards us. Some of the professionals are coming to us, which is why we announced VIP and Verdon Validated. And we have denser cards we announced just you know, five minutes ago. The last announcement we have is some of our customers who have bought early stage flash. So some of the early movers in flash, you probably have some of the people here earlier today, and their cards were great, but they were sub one terabyte, or maybe sub two terabyte. Believe it or not, those folks, some of those web scale chems, have approached us saying, hey, can you take these cards back and trade? Because we want to get as quick as we can to the fastest 20 nanometer, fast microsecond type speed, 4.8 terabytes in a half height, half length type format. So can you take these products back and trade? So we're announcing a great investment protection for our customers who want to trade those products in towards the denser cards. That enables their investment protection and able to get over to a very card Which product, quicker. Competitive products. You'll competitive take products, competitive yes. Products. yes. So I'd like to go back to this whole area of how do you get new applications out there? Where do you think the, the seedbed of that's going to be? I mean, there's clearly a complete rethinking of how you design the system, how you design the input, how you design the, uh, the analytics to be near real time. Complete re-change of how you can do that. Who are the people, I, we've talked about China, but within the uh, Europe and, and the States, et cetera, and that's still the biggest market. Is it, is it going to be the, a new cloud provider who's sitting in some garage somewhere? Well, who are the people who are actually uh, leading this? One of the more innovative users, and they're large, they're probably the places we might shop on a weekend, starts with a W, starts with a T, they're huge users of e-tailing. So they're trying to compete with, I'll say the names, the Googles, the Amazons, uh, in many ways the LinkedIn's and the Facebooks, for our attention off the web. So it's the brick and mortar companies that are billions and billions in size, but they're not just competing with same store sales, they're competing at the web type accounts. So e-tailing's a huge use case for us. It's all about the application, but applications are made up nothing more than databases. So whether it be freeware, NoSQL, MySQL type databases, that's really the engine that we really got to improve. That's where time is money. And the last thing, and I've seen some presentations earlier today, analytics and external analytics. Those are the three use cases we're seeing from it. Um, as far as geography, 
you know, we're doing a lot in the Northwest. We're doing a lot, obviously, across the Bay. Um, a little bit slower embracement across EMEA, but China's a big hotbed for us, and uh, you know, good global business for us. Good balance, but we are seeing pockets of uh, improvement outside of e-tailing around the scale-out type business, but great question. All right, Kim, run up against the clock. Really appreciate you coming back, sharing the props. Sure. Uh, always a pleasure seeing you. Thank you, David. <laughs> Thanks, uh, go Verdon. All right, keep it right there, buddy. Ray Wang is here. Uh, he'll be coming on theCUBE. Ray is a, an Oracle watcher, enterprise software analyst, uh, head of Constellation Research, and a, and a longtime CUBE guest. So keep it right there, we'll be right back. This is theCUBE.